Yes, yes, okay, so today we're back. Another tutorial Tuesday, you know how we do. You've been asking for more panels, so today you're learning the three most essential panels. Let's get into it. Okay, so that is what the three panels look like. As you can see, these ones are ones that I use all the time and the ones that you're gonna learn and get down. As per with this video, what we can do, I'm gonna break the skills down, make sure that you can do them, and then we're gonna try and make sure that you can understand them because it's not just having the technique to do the panel, it's being able to execute it against an opponent. So I'm gonna show you how to practice with, without an opponent, and at the end, we're gonna have a panel challenge, me versus Robono GK, to see if either of us can hit these moves. We're gonna get into it, this is the first trick. Okay, so the first move is the two touch. I think this is the most essential panel in the sport. This is designed for whenever someone wants to lunge in, try and take the ball, you're gonna be ready to give them a panel. This is what it looks like. It's just a simple movement. We're just gonna do a basic layup. And what we're gonna do is gonna be here, boom, just like that. And the gap is gonna be two feet forwards. And it's gonna come through like this. Here's some examples of me doing it so you get the idea. Essentially, we're gonna break this move down into three easy steps. First one, strong foot, my right foot. Now, I'm on the pitch, there's the goal behind me. I'm gonna be playing with the defender. We're gonna to have to have the range. This is what's gonna be super important later on in the video. I'm gonna talk about this. Uh, for now, we're just gonna be against them. We're gonna assume that we're doing ground moves, you know. All of you are ballers, so you can do this. You'll be moving around. They won't want to take the ball when you're moving fast. And then you're going to move slow, stop the ball. So for this move, what I do, I have my sole of the foot on the ball and I open up and I stop it against the side of my foot. I'll stop it here. So this is part one, here, just like this. Boom. Essentially for this move, we're not going to wait until the defender lunges in and then react. We're going to guess that they're going to lunge in and then we're going to start the move. They're then going to open their legs and we're going to pan them, okay? So it's kind of, we know that they're going to move. And the reason we know they're going to move is because we're going fast, they can't take the ball. As soon as we give them an opportunity to take it by slowing down, that's when they're going to want to take it. So now we're ready for step two. So part one was done with my right foot like so, I've slowed it down and now with my left foot, I'm going to touch it across my body towards my right, okay? So it's going to be like a La Croqueta, however we do it stationary, we're going to go one, their legs coming in, we're going to go around it, final touch, third one, inside of our foot, through the gap. So if we were to have this gap, being the person's legs, they were standing there, we've gone one, two, three, just like so, okay? And this will be the move, the faster you can do it, the more aim you can do it, the better it will be. So this is what I'd recommend you do, you get two sticks, you get two rocks, you get two cones, you're gonna make this gap, it's the size of a small step. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna move around, doing ground moves, we're gonna go slow, that's the next step, we're gonna put it through. And we're just gonna practice that. I think this is a good way to do it, and of course, make sure you do it with both feet, just like that. This move is very easy, it's very basic, it doesn't look impressive, however, with practice, this will be a very important one for you to get down. And one added pro tip is when you do this first motion, you wanna open up your shoulder and you wanna look like you're gonna run past the player, all right? Giving a little bit of a fake. This is gonna draw them in. They're gonna step back and then they're gonna know that it is very windy. They're gonna think you're gonna wanna run. Boom, you're not running. You're then gonna lift your weight slightly back towards yourself. They think they can take the ball. I don't know why, but it always kind of works. You're gonna be here, here. You see that I'm even lifting my weak foot a little. And then when I put it down, it's with the touch. It makes it a bit quicker. You know how we do it. One, two. Ooh. I missed it, but I'm better at hitting it on people. Now we're gonna go into second step. This one has a very high success rate. So get it done. Okay, so the second skill is a level up of the first one. We've got the first move, boom, we're against the opponent, ha, they haven't opened. What do we do? Well, I'm right against their foot, they're gonna wanna take it. I'm just gonna, boom, push it through anyway because what's gonna happen is they're gonna be here, they wanna take the ball, it's against their foot, and then they try and take it and you've, you've panned them. This move's super sneaky, we're gonna break it down, let's go. Okay, so to get this move down, what we're gonna wanna learn is a move called the sleep. It looks a bit like this, and it is a scooping motion with the inside of our foot. And we're just gonna be moving forwards like so, and you can turn, and you can go the other way. And it's actually a really good move anyway, just to use on the pitch, you can do oh, You know, it's pretty cool. However, for panners, how we're gonna wanna do this is, how we're gonna wanna do this, we're gonna wanna be able to have the control to sleep it forwards. In this motion, what I'm doing is, I'm taking it with the insole of my foot, I'm putting it to the furthest distance until my leg is straight, and then I'm gonna pull it back, sleep again, okay? So I don't pull it back, stop, and then go, I'm pulling it straight. 
and just do this move slowly it's normally faster going forwards and slower going back just like this and i think this is something that you can do as a good warm-up you know every session just some sleeps you'll notice that your standing leg starts to hurt so what you do you're going to switch and you're going to practice it on your other leg so when you're when you're doing this you don't just want to go straight you want to imagine there's a foot in front of you so if you were just going straight you'd hit it you want to go around okay so when we're practicing we're going to go around 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 this move is pretty cool so in this sport if you try to punter the opponent however you know their legs are closed and you lose possession this means you could lose the match so essentially we're going to want to make sure that when we're executing the punter we have 100 percent confidence that's why this two touch the first move is good however if you don't see the gap last second you're going to want to cancel it how to do that oh sleep okay now we're also ready to attack again this isn't just a defensive move we're now ready to see are they going to move and if they do we put it through all right so now i'm going to show you some examples of me using the skill and hopefully it helps to show you what it looks like Okay, so with this move, like the first two touch, you can do any variation you want before it. Maybe you're deciding that when you're moving around, you want to do it from a clap, and then you're going to execute the move. You're going to have to be fluid with it. You're going to have to be able to freestyle it based on what the opponent is doing. However, one way that I think you should practice it is by taking the first skill, which is going to be this opening up motion and then the move, and then applying it. So we're going to go one, scoop, scoop, okay? So we're here, we do the move, but we stop it just in case the opponent didn't open their legs, and then we're going to be ready to force it through. A good way to practice this is to just do it, boom, put it through, go collect it, do this 10 times, one, two, there we go. And the more control you have, the better. The more control you have, the better. So sometimes, for example, you might lean back a lot. This means that it's very hard to get the power to put it through. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're leaning over the ball, boom, you put it through, practice that. Also, another good one to practice is one, two, away. This is just good in case they don't open, allows you to keep the ball camera press. And have the third one, I like this one. This one even works against Neymar, because Seon Garnier did it and he's a legend. Check this out. Okay, so this one involves standing on the ball. I think it looks pretty dull. However, what we're gonna do is try and not fall off. When you're standing on the ball, the opponent really wants to kick it, make you fall over it. Because of this, it means you can hop off. As they're gonna kick, boom, panna. You know how we do it, it's gonna be the scoop one. You don't have to stop the ball when you're scooping. You can just scoop it all the way through with one foot. So this means anytime you have the ball on your strong foot, if the opponent comes in, you can just scoop it through and that would be it. So for example, with the proper example would be we're here, boom, pan up. At any point you can do that. Another point is that any time you have the ball on your strong foot, you can roll it to your weak foot and at that moment you can hit a panna. So you can hit a panna here or you can hit a panna there. Because we've got the two touch down and we've got the one touch scoop. So we're in a pretty good situation. But this one, this is a super dope one and I want to see you lot hit it on your friends, opponents, families, dogs, cats if possible, I don't know, it has to be a pretty big cat, but anyway, what it is, we're going to stand on the ball and then we're going to nutmeg them. So here's how to stand on the ball. So to stand on the ball, step one, what we're going to do, I'm right footed, so this is how I practiced it. I just put a little bit of weight on it and I get used to it, all right? So I'm just putting a little bit of weight down, I'm raising my other foot, getting used to it. Another thing that I did, I was in the kitchen, all right? You know, you got the counters and I'd have my hands on the counter and I'd, whoa, you know, just like this and I'd hold on. I think this is a good way to do it. If you're not allowed to play football in the kitchen, maybe get a friend and you're gonna like hold their shoulders and you're gonna try and stay on it, all right? And what's happening is I'm putting one foot just off the middle and I'm putting one foot on the side and then as I get on, I'm trying to center it up. So you see, I put it just off the middle, I'm gonna put it on the side and then I center up, all right? So that's how it's gonna be. And with time and practice, one of those things that with repetition, I think a little bend in the knees helps. If you're standing dead straight, I don't even, you know, that's a bit weird, but a little bit of bend in the knees, you can come either side of the ball slightly and whichever way the ball moves, so if the ball moves back, I have to go back, ball moves sideways, I go sideways and so on. So whichever way you wobble, that's where you adjust. Yeah, this is the move. Obviously be careful when you're doing it because anyone that sees you doing this is gonna wanna kick it and you don't wanna fall over from this position. However, what we're gonna have to do is when you're playing, you're gonna have to try and guess all of the triggers, you know, that when they wanna kick it and eventually you'll be able to spot them uh, sometimes it is literally them raising their legs. Sometimes it's their planting leg coming close 
and then when they want to kick it we're going to hop off my left foot goes behind the ball i bend this leg it means i'm ready and i'm going to scoop around the incoming foot boom just like so and i mean as i said Seon garnier the legend make sure you're checking him out did it against neymar so this move can work against anybody And if on the first touch it doesn't work, well, who knows? Maybe on the second, you'll be able to get it. Okay, it's me and Ravon GK. We're just going to train, try and test this out. You know how we do. Make sure that you notice a couple of things when you're watching this. Try and notice when I'm trying to execute the trick. You know how far away Bill is or when he's trying to do it, how close I am. Because the range is super important. Say, for example, I hit a panel or Ravon GK panels me. You're going to have to look at what the defender did wrong just before that. You know, what was it? Why could the person that hit the panel know that they were going to do that move? Uh, that's one thing you have to look at. Another thing is you'll see there's a lot of variations to the movements. I've shown you one key two touch. I've also shown you one key scoop. But remember, we can do everything with our weak foot. We can do everything whilst moving. We can do it at different angles. A two touch flat on is a bit more predictable. However, imagine I'm moving, I'm doing it turning. Well, actually, that's, that's a bit more unpredictable. So you're gonna have to look out for that as well. Try and add it to your game. Okay, it's raining, it's stormy. We're gonna put it on the tripod and pray that the camera doesn't fly away. Hope to see you in a sec. Okay, 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 so we're about to do the panel challenge. You know, it's same old, same old. We're basically only gonna try and get points doing the two touch, the standing on the ball trick and the scoop. But obviously we're gonna try and do some variations. And it's your job to analyze how we get the panners and what we're trying and why we're trying it. And then you've got to go away and do it. So, let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, the panners definitely work. What worked was a combination of the scoop panner doing it both feet, mixing it up. And another key tip, which I kind of forgot until I played, was flick ups. If you do a flick up prior, it looks like you haven't got the ball, haven't got control as much. The opponent's definitely going to want to come in. One thing for trying to defend two touches, be careful of putting your foot down when you lunge. You don't really want to do that because it's going to be too hard to lift it back up. You kind of want to more reach and grab. It's kind of the technique for panner tackling. You don't want to plant your foot. So when Bill did that, he got hit. Um, where you'll see there was somewhere I didn't do that, but if I had planted, I'd have also got hit. So that's kind of one thing to take away from it as well. Yeah. The key to winning in panel is obviously by nutmegging the opponent and also not getting nutmegged. Yeah, it's also good to work on that tactic. However, that is it for today's tutorial. I hope you have learned something. I hope you get these essential panels down and I hope you nutmeg your friends and opponents and family and dogs and everyone with it. If you do, make sure to send it on Instagram at Street Panel. You know how we do and I'll share the best on my page. It's exciting to see all of you get better as ballers. If you have learned something, please smash that like button and comment down below what skill you want to learn next week on Tutorial Tuesday. I know 
you want to learn the Rabona, the bicycle kick, uh, there's some Aka 3000 variations that I keep seeing come up, so I'm going to have to do one on that. And scoring Panagos, I've actually done a tutorial for scoring Panagos, I just did it with a very special guest. So I can't release that until the Sunday video is out. Keep your eyes peeled for that. The next Sunday video is a banger, so make sure you're subscribed, click the notification bell on, because I'm replying to the fastest comments. Y'all the MVPs, let's go.